For many people living with rare conditions, the journey to an accurate diagnosis can be long, frustrating and worrisome. HRA Pharma understands this and is dedicated to raising awareness as well as providing treatment for conditions such as Cushing's syndrome. For Rare Disease Day 2022, I spoke to Dr. Kate Scoffings, a former Cushing's disease patient and consultant professor, Mark Gunnell. Thank you both so much for joining me. Kate, to you first. Cushing's disease is extremely rare. It's difficult to diagnose. Even you yourself as a GP weren't able to spot it. Yeah, I think that the, the symptoms when they begin are very, very vague. Certainly in my case, they, they built up very slowly over a period of time. So I think it's very difficult for, um, it was certainly difficult for me to, to join all the dots together to actually come to a conclusion that this was all one thing rather than lots of very separate little things. So for example, I, I started with uh, my blood pressure went very high and um, my period stopped. And this was sort of three or four years before I was formally diagnosed. They were both looked into. There was no cause found. I was just sort of told to, to get on with things. And you do, you get on with things. I was tired all the time, but I was a, a mum of two. Busy house, busy job, obviously, as a GP. So you put it down to all of those things. And then I got um, blood clots on both my lungs in 2016. And then it was about four or five months later that I went uh, just for my routine eye check and they said, your eye pressures have gone up. And it was at that point that I just thought, this is ridiculous. I, there's something going on here. And the light bulb moment really for me was after the eye exam, I went home and I was looking at myself in the mirror and I looked at my legs and thought, my running's going really well. My legs are really slim. And then thought, wait a minute, my arms are really thin oh my God, my tummy's enormous. I look like the textbook picture. And that's when I really started to, to sort of question things. I went to my GP with the full set of, of what symptoms I had uh, and said, do you think this could be Cushing's? And her immediate response was, no, 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 you can't have Cushing's, it's rare. Um, and I had to push to, to say, well, could you still just test me? Okay, let's bring in, in Mark now. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor. Um, Talk to us about why Cushing's disease is so hard to diagnose. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I think Kate's actually probably caught the essence of this, which is that many of the features are uh, non-specific. They're things that a lot of people might experience in their in their lives, uh, in particular the physical features, and also the fact that actually it is a rare condition means that it's often not really at the top of the list of things that people are thinking about. So, Mark, are there key things that health professionals uh, should be looking out for? I think there certainly are. To get to the diagnosis of Cushing's, you really have to be a good detective in so much as you need to take all those pieces of evidence that are starting to, to fall onto the table, as it were, and, and piece them together. So if you, for example, see a young lady uh, where there is a weight issue, she's developed high blood pressure, she's developed diabetes, perhaps she's now got acne or and, you know hair growth in places which are unwelcome from a lady's perspective. If there's bruising, if the skin is a little thinner, looks like that perhaps of somebody who's older, then you should be stopping and saying, hang on, this is very unusual. I mean, Kate said, you know, she was diagnosed in 2017. What's the implications for someone who's, who's undiagnosed and untreated? Well, they're pretty significant, as you've really already heard from Kate. She'd already got uh, problems in terms of blood pressure, which almost certainly would have not have gone away. That blood pressure probably would have become more difficult to control. And we know that actually, when we didn't have so good treatments for Cushing's, people who had uh, had symptoms dating back four or five years, about nearly half of those patients historically probably would not have survived. Now, in modern medicine, that's not the case. We've got much more effective treatments. We can uh, treat uh, with tablets, for example, uh, which can lower the cortisol levels, and that can produce quite quick and effective change in the patient. And then we have the option, hopefully, of a maturity operation, which is to remove the small tumour that's causing the Cushing's. These tend to be benign tumours, by the way, but these are, these are readily dealt with by an expert centre. Kate, um, how easy was your treatment? I ended up having pituitary surgery in October 2017, which in itself wasn't overly traumatic, but then the recovery from that was um, prolonged. And how are you feeling now? Fine. 
Good. Thank you. <laughs> so every day, are you, are you feeling good every day? Or? Yeah, I have to take replacement steroids. So because my pituitary gland doesn't produce the right hormones anymore, I'm probably going to be on those for life. So that's taking tablets at a specified time every day, four times a day. Well, Dr. Kate Scoffins and Professor Mark Gunnell, thank you so much, both of you, for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you.